We're looking out across the Sierra Nevada now, 2,000 kilometers in excess of the Vuelta Espana has covered. We're in our final week. We are back in the saddle, and still that man is in the golden jersey, Isidro Nozal. George Hincapi of the United States. After he finished two days ago, he decided uh, enough was enough. It was time now to prepare for the World Championships in Canada. He has good form. I think he wants to hang on to the strength he's got. So that's uh, has George gone. The other four riders, Levi Leipheim is now best of them. Climbing steadily, he was once 150th in this race. He's now 73rd. Floyd Landis, Bobby Julik and Freddy Rodriguez, the four remaining Americans there in the race itself. Right, let's have a look at the map itself and see where we're off to today. This, of course, is now stage 16 of the race, or stage 15, or no, 16, as we go from Jaén to Sierra Nevada. It's a stage of just over 100 miles, but of course the big teeth is at the far end of the course. We've been over the Fuensanta climb already. Unai Echebria outsprinted uh, his namesake David Echebria there. Um, but there's only a small breakaway of two riders clear at the moment, uh, Diaz and Taula. And the latest gap we're getting is around about eight minutes. So they've really given them a run at the mountain. Now, this morning, with the loss of George Hincapi and indeed of Vladimiro Belli also gone, 163 of the riders remain of the 198, and the team's intact now, six of the 22, as we head off towards the last week of the race. There's the two non-starters just confirmed there. George Hincapi went home after the race ended two days ago, and Vladimiro Belli also uh, called it a day as well. A bit surprised about the Lamprey rider uh, dropping out. He was reasonably well up overall, top 40 place. And we're looking here at Roberto Haras. Still has not found how to get rid of the golden jersey sitting right behind him here. There are now seven riders forming, just over 40 seconds behind Diaz. Sevilla, Mercado, Cardenas and Ari Arienza have, uh, Artienza rather, has been joined now by Valverde, Del Omo and Piepoli. And we could visibly see that Oscar Sevilla was waiting for the arrival of Alejandro Valverde, and he's now there. Well, uh, you can see the reason he did that was because he was not very happy with the position of the, uh, the orange jersey, the leader of the King of the Mountains, uh, Felix Cardenas. And not only, I think you said earlier, Phil, uh, Felix Cardenas, he's uh, not only lost a couple of stages because he refused to work, I think he's also probably lost quite a few friends as well. And the one thing in the sport of professional cycling, and I think Bob will agree with me on this, is you cannot afford to make enemies because it's quite easy to make oh, a bloke lose lots. a race. I had, had I had a few, but I try to make more friends than enemies, and uh, uh, Cardenas not making very many friends at all in the breakaway, and you do need allies when you go on these breakaways. They're about to catch our erstwhile leader on the road who's been out there for 130 kilometers. If he can hang on, it would be a miracle. I think they'll shell uh, Diaz Lovato immediately, but this is a very strong little breakaway. They got a solid lead on the peloton that's right now led by the Onse team. You can see them right there, De Galdiano in third position, being lead by, uh, led by Marco Serrano there and uh, one of the Domina Vicance riders, Martin Pérez de Guero. And we'll see Michael Rasmussen a little bit further down and Luis Pérez and uh, the gold jersey just tucked in there with Roberto Eras just a little ways down. Eras has got to attack. It's not the type of climb that suits his talents, but he has to sh throw caution to the wind and try to attack anyways. At least put a little bit of pressure on the leader. 52 seconds now to Valverde's group. Mm. They're just behind uh, uh, the breakaway, and the leader is, of course, Isidro Nozal. Eras has to do everything he can to put some pressure on Isidro Nozal, but so far it's all Onse. They have four guys still in the front group, and that's quite an impressive accomplishment. <coughs> Well, excuse me. Well, uh, just thinking, Paul, that um, Valverde here now is currently climbing into fifth place over Mancebo, so there's got to be a counter-attack coming from him soon. Well, in fact, he's also uh, approaching the position, I think, of Manuel Beltran as well, because he's uh, not too far behind him. So uh, he's the guy making a good operation this afternoon. If they're not careful, he may well be the major surprise on this stage. And uh, this man here is just thinking, I think, about getting this mountain stage behind him because... Uh, the leader, Isidro Nozal, was put in a spot of uh, difficulty in the early part of the climb, but he never panicked. He had his teammates around him to pull him back into, the co into contact with men like Roberto Heras. The man who really sacrificed an awful lot earlier on was Manuel Beltran because he set an unbelievable tempo and followed that up with lots of attacks from varying riders from so many different teams. 
I thought that was going to be the end uh, then for that leader, Isidro Nozel, as we come up here to 10 kilometers to go. And there is the lone leader still surviving by not very much more than 15 seconds. And then it's a further 55 seconds back to the group of Isidro Nozel. A couple of kilometers to go and uh, around about eight kilometers to go. It's when the gradient starts to kick in and we might see a few more attacks coming if Roberto Heras has got the legs today. Well, obviously the first flurry of attacks did not work out the way Heras had planned. They're still riding alongside one another. So now he's going to probably wait and recover and hit them in the last uh, six or seven kilometers and just see what happens. There he is licking his lips in anticipation or perhaps he just needs a drink but either way so far this race has not gone the way of uh, Roberto Heras the winner of the race in the year 2000 he's in a group of about 20 riders here and the one man around him is the golden jersey he's got first and second the one man gaining most here number 98 uh, Alejandro Valverde there is the catch so Pedro Diaz has come back now into a group making eight riders at least for the moment Looks as though Diaz Labato just has a little extra kick. He looks cool. Maybe he's been saving just a little bit to go with the front group when it came up. Well, now's his big chance. He certainly deserves something because he's ridden very, very well today in that original breakaway of 14 riders, which escaped after 32 kilometers. Here we are now, uh, just uh, 10 or so kilometers from the finish, and he's still in the front group. It's going to get a lot more difficult quite shortly though because we come up to the steeper part of this climb uh, 52 seconds separating the front of the bike race from the group of the leader and in fact this move will be putting uh, Valverde up towards a possibility of a fourth place finish in the Vuelta a España right now because he started the day not too far behind Manuel Beltran there is Beltran uh, really digging deep and looking for all kinds of courage to stay in contact because he's done a lot of work for his team leader here this afternoon it's one of the last chances for Roberto Heras to try and dislodge the man in the golden jersey Heras starting in third place in the overall classification this afternoon and uh, he really has to do something special it would be a good idea for him to try and leapfrog across to this group once he gets to the steeper part of the course and oh, there is uh, Diaz see. and he wasn't uh, he didn't really he didn't have enough left in those legs to stay in contact with this group which is being ripped to pieces by Oscar Sevilla well, we're just watching the clock tick through there at nine kilometers, Bob. It's sad about Diaz, but this is a classic move now, and it's worked out according to plan for the riders on the Kelme squad. A very good tactical maneuver there by Sevilla to wait because of the non-cooperation by Cardenas, the the, uh, the rider there, is Diaz Lo Lobato being dropped from the breakaway. Mm. Long break, great for publicity for his squad, one of the smaller teams in the bike race. He's going to slide a long ways down the mountain while our seven guys in the front are really making a huge tempo, led by the, the Kelme tandem of Alejandro Valverde, who was able to catch up when Sevilla waited. Didn't want to cooperate without a teammate towing Cardenas all the way to the line. That would be a bit of a disaster. So he asked for uh, Valverde to be sent forward. Valverde had the legs to attack. He's been climbing fabulously. He's won two stages already, Alejandro Valverde has, and able to make the junction to Sevilla. Now that's a very strong duo. All right, 59 seconds at nine kilometers to go, so they are actually coming back because they were out to one minute 10, but that was based on the leader on the road who has now been caught and dropped. I think they will see some very hard attacks coming from the group just behind our leaders here. Cardenas trying to match the accelerations of the Kilmey riders, and now the attacks are starting to come. They're trying to isolate the riders behind, and Cardenas is trying to close the gap each time either Valverde or Sevilla attack from the Kilmey squad. Sevilla. Now Val Valverde will sit on for a moment, and when they catch him, he'll probably go. So uh, Kilmey really on a mission to win the stage today. Well, I tell you what, uh, Felix Cardenas there in the orange jersey is certainly not making any friends oh. at all in this group, and it's in fact going to be Mercado, Mercado who will go this time. Well, they're going to have to chase him now because he's just the quality of the rider who could win this stage. He waited for Oscar Sevilla to make his move and then played his card. Valverde, I don't think, will risk an attack at this moment. He's protecting a possible rise in this race up to fourth overall, and I think he'll try to make better use of gaining time rather than just trying to win the day. That is rather a large gap he suddenly opened up. He up. opened up a great gap there, and Cardenas is on the front now. It doesn't seem like he's quite as motivated to close the gap to uh, up to um, the rider from the Benesto team, Mercado. Maybe it's because he used to race for Kelme and has a little bit of animosity against the team. Alberto Martinez now coming out of the pack 51 seconds behind, so they took 10 seconds out of those riders in the last kilometer. This race is most certainly not over. Onse still on the front. They've done a great stage. That's Marcus Serrano setting the tempo for the last like 10 Paul's kilometers. On the attack, that, yeah. 
<laughs> Who's my friend? Robert Lysaker. <laughs> no, that oh. wasn't Lysaker. Oh, that was oh, Martinez. Alberto Martinez, yes. Oh, beg your pardon. And there is Eras, right? And that's exactly where Nozal needs to keep himself, just on the wheel of Eras. But Eras needs to start attacking now very hard with everything that he has left. Well, Mercado, when he came to this race with success in 2001, a stage win and a fifth place overall, we were talking about him then as a future winner of the Vuelta. Hasn't quite worked out for him yet, uh, but he has had a win this year in the Dauphiné as they're now trying to sort it out from this group here. But this infighting and countering each other moves is going to result in a catch. Well, it's quite strange as well because there's one Colombian in the breakaway and there's six Spaniards, and I think, well, one Italian, I should say, as well, because Pipoli, although he's... Uh, ridden for Bonesto for many, many years is actually an Italian. They uh, obviously, I think, are trying to bury the hatchet here, aren't they, Bob? Because they certainly are trying to give him a run for his money, not happy at all by the fact that he continues to sit on and won't collaborate with the pacemaking. And Piepoli now is uh, going to be the best ally that that uh, Mercado could have. He will measure all the attacks now coming from this group. The Kelme riders will have to reorganize and uh, perhaps use a little bit different strategy. Now they're going to be chasing, and it'll be Piepoli sitting on their chase. Cardena seems to have come to the front now, um, and he's chasing Valverde. It's starting to get very competitive here. We're going to see the gap uh, to the peloton from this group and see if anybody can try to get across. It was Yuskatel Yuskades, Alberto Martinez. The last time we looked down the hill, he was trying to get across, but he was easily matched by Marcus Serrano of the Once team. Valverde getting second in that sprint pool. If he wins the stage, he gets the polka dot jersey the points. Very good move by him to get that uh, two points, and that'll bring him just a little bit closer. And yes, if he does win the stage this afternoon, he will take the lead in the points classification by a single point from uh, Herr Zabel, who at the moment is currently leading that competition with 135 points. Now then, there's going to be an explosion from the back. It might be coming straight away because this looks like a, re a rejuvenated Manuel Beltran who is now trying to launch yet another attack. They've gone through the losing ground at the moment on the leader on the road. 109 now at that checkpoint. And still this group is sticking together like a little bunch of limpets. And uh, I think they're running out of time. And I think they're showing us that they haven't quite got the power required to break the golden jersey. Well, they tried at the very bottom of the climb, and I tell you what, it's very rare to see so many attacks in the, the first a few kilometres mm. of a climb that's going to last 30 kilometres in length, 18 miles from the top, from bottom to top. And uh, the golden jersey really has done everything to defend his position. There's still a few chances left. Uh, Beltran, I think, just trying to pick up the pace a bit because he realises he's got a chance there of losing his place in the overall classification to Valverde, who is in the group in front. Well, the way they hit the bottom of the climb, all the team attack, and they could not possibly have kept that sort of pressure up. They had to take a respite somewhere, and it's been midway up the climb. Rasmussen is still highly dangerous there in the centre for Rabobank. Is still a possibility. The, the breakaway is certainly reachable right now, Bob, at 61 minutes, but I really think that, uh, that sooner or later the golden jersey himself might actually come to the front. He's looking stronger as he grows in confidence now because... When he was hit at the bottom, he must have been rather depressed that so many riders were attacking him, but he survived. And as these kilometre banners go by now, he is going to gather his confidence and is going to think perhaps of even getting himself a good finish. One thing's for sure, he's going to thank his teammates for the way they're climbing today. Harass has put in a very serious attack here as the gradient really starts to kick in here as we get towards the summit of the Sierra Nevada. So too as Igor Gonzalez de Galdiano, he's having a spot to bother. And I wonder if this is the time to remind everybody that was on the slopes of this climb about uh, a year and a half ago that Onse had a very difficult time. They lost a lot of their lead. And right now the man who's in the lead in the golden jersey is really asking his teammates to pace him back up to Roberto Heras. Roberto Heras has Michael Rasmussen there for company. And, uh, you know, just a few moments ago, we were waiting for something to happen, and it was really going to come from the man by the name of Roberto Heras, because he knew that as it started to kick in, he moved from the front of the peloton. He was so confident that this was the steeper part of the climb. And look at the Onse riders just looking down to check the gears. And I can tell you one thing, whatever gear you're in when Roberto Heras attacks, it certainly does start to hurt. And uh, for the first time, we're now seeing the golden jersey in a spot of bother. Well, Bob, he's up, it's all up to Heras. I don't think he can get the time required, but if he can take some time, he'll live to fight another day. Yes, absolutely. That's the time gap to Heras, perhaps 22 seconds. Uh, they've just swept up Atienza. Rasmussen doing quite well to get onto Heras's wheel, and he's really making his move now to get a little bit closer to the golden jersey of race leadership. 
Nozal has ridden so well. Marcus Serrano is still there trying to pace him. Atienza has pulled the plug and detonated. He's going backwards, but Roberto Eras now is flying up this mountain. He's waited to the perfect moment to attack on the mountain that's very gradual and in sections it's quite steep and he's used that steep section to get yeah. this gap now. Nozal in third position there just holding on to the wheel of Marcus Serrano who's trying to set the tempo and limit the damage being done by Roberto Eras right now. Francis Gonzalez just in front of him. He doesn't need to panic right now. All he needs to do is just to make sure he doesn't lose too much time. And if Roberto Heras cracks towards the summit, he can pull himself back into this race. Uh, he's got, let's not forget, four minutes in hand over Roberto Heras. And uh, that's the one thing that uh, a good team manager should be able to tell him. Don't panic. Yeah. Just ride sensibly because you're not going to lose the Vuelta a España in the next few kilometers. But if you panic, you certainly could lose a lot more time than... Uh, than two or three minutes. Armstrong, Lance Armstrong was placed in a similar situation when uh, Jan Ulrich hit him on the Col de Jupla in the Alps once, and uh, and Johan Daniel is very quick to remind Lance of his time advantage and not to panic. And I think that's exactly what Saiz will be saying to his man at the moment. Uh, but there comes uh, Atienza. He's back in the fold, and he's seeing the yellow jersey, the golden jersey, as they call it in this race, uh, coming up now. And he's going to try and take a deep breath and hope he can hang on because this is very fine tempo riding being done to keep this man right in the picture. It looks like Serrano setting the pace there as the road kicks up yet again, but with every pedal rev, he's knocking out the meters. Igor Gonzalez de Galdiano is not in that group, so he really does risk losing his uh, second place in the overall classification this afternoon to Roberto Heras. Heras wants to chip away at the lead of Igor Gonzalez de Galdiano and, of course, Isidro Nozal. He needs to do this every time the race goes uphill between here and Madrid if he wants to have a chance of winning this bike race for a second time. The time gaps that he's opening up here are not all that great, but if he can take another minute today, there's another mountain stage left to come. And then we've got an uphill mountain time trial. So this race really could go down to the final time trial just before the eve of the race into Madrid. At the moment, about 15 seconds is the gap between Rasmussen and Heras and the golden jersey. 31 to the leaders, I think, at the moment, uh, as the uh, clock started with the first riders through, didn't it? I thought they started with Eras and Rasmussen. And okay, it looks like right. Nozal is having a little bit of trouble following the pace set by Marcus Serrano. And look at the tempo that Roberto Eras now is putting into the bike race. Fantastic ride here. His teammates working so hard at the bottom of the mountain to set this move up. And now Eras is trying to follow through on that and punctuate a big day in the mountains for the U.S. Postal. Best climber perhaps in the world. Most scintillating when it's very steep. And not a climb that suits him, but he's not letting that worry him. And he's trying everything to get away from his Idra Nozal, who's having a little bit of a hard time now. I'm sure Nozal would love to claw his way back. He mustn't panic, like we've said, and just ride a good, steady rhythm. He would still have quite a bit of time in hand, but now the gap's gone out to just over three minutes. Here's two Ks. I think we'll see that that's our leaders down on the road. And there's five riders there, so I think that Mercado must still be out front, and we haven't caught up with him yet at two kilometers to go. He might have played the card that will win the day. There are the two chasers of Harass and Rasmussen. And there is the next group on the road. It is going to be not a big game, whichever way you look at it today, for Roberto Heras, but he didn't have the legs at the base of the climb to get clear of the group. Well, the important thing is just to keep chipping away. He needed to, uh, to pull himself back uh, just around about the one minute over Igor Gonzalez de Galeano, and I'm actually pretty sure he's done that for the moment. But the important thing uh, right now, look at the way this man is using his teammate. Uh, Isidro Gonzalez just sitting on the wheel of... Marco Serrano there. Mm. He will be pulling his body inside out right now. He's probably suffering more than he's ever suffered before in his life because he realizes the challenges are coming right here. Look at Serrano trying to encourage him, trying to get the concentration back into his pedaling style. Well, sorry about the pictures, but up here, the heights of its atmospherics obviously affecting the signal. We'll stay with it. The clock is working at least. There's Levi Leipheimer, about 37 seconds. A spread here as they go around the far bend. But as they continue towards the top, these are not the gains that Roberto Heras really did hope for today. They launched those savage attacks at the bottom, and for a while, the golden jersey was up to it. The golden jersey followed as long as he could. Igor Gonzalez de Galdiano is at, at in danger of losing his second-place position. It looks like Cardenas now is the trying to close the gap down to Mercado, who's just up in that cluster of cars, and it looks like Cardenas, the man sitting on the Kelme tandem, has saved just enough energy to try to close the gap, but I guarantee you that Valverde and Sevilla will be chasing desperately, along with Piepoli, to catch Felix Cardenas. 
He's come across that gap pretty smartest though, Bob, because just in front of that small group of uh, motorbikes and a single car there, you can see uh, Mercado. Cardenas is uh, probably around about 10, uh, 15 meters behind right now, but he's literally visibly going a lot quicker than the Spaniard who's led this bike race for the last four or five kilometers. Well, here we are now seeing Juan Miguel Mercado. He hasn't won a race since June when he won the sixth stage of the Dauphiné a race in France. The clock is counting, six seconds, five seconds. Uh, for Cadenas, who is now trying to latch on and stop the run of second places in the mountains. As we pull back, though, the big chase is on, of course. These are the four riders left of the breakaway. None are affecting the golden jersey, although Valverde himself is going to tighten the grip in the top placings of the race. He's in that group. Here's the man who launched a scintillating attack lower down, and he's still in with a great chance. Now, he won the uh, fifth stage of the Vuelta in September. 2001 and he's never won a stage of this race since well in fact he's going to have a hard time winning here because look at that return there coming from Cardenas picking his way through the cars around about around the television motorbike there and he's right onto the tail of Mercado Cabeza de la Carrera this is the front end of the bike race right now and it's going to be a very passionate sprint between these two riders and I think Felix Cardenas is going to prove that his tactics were correct and he's looking at uh, what he's been dreaming of for some time right now. Well, he's got to come through and do a little bit of work with Mercado. The Sevilla group will come back, and if we've seen Valverde they come out of nowhere to win stages. Now he's coming through. He's going to take the initiative, even attack now. Yep. He's going flat out to the finish. That's exactly what you need to do. If you want to win any stage of a bike race, you have to take the initiative, bull by the horns, and go flat out to the finish. Now, this finally is a good move by Felix Cardenas. Well, that was a great move. He came right up in the end. He had to do it by himself. He had to leave the chasing group, catch the lone leader, could not allow a Mercado to recover. He must hit him straight away, which he's done. So after playing the bridesmaid in the mountains throughout this tour, the king of the mountains will get maximum points at the top of this mountain today and the stage win as well. He won the 10th stage of the Vuelta in the year 2000. Now he can add this one to his list. And uh, I think this is a remarkable ride by him today because he's marked all of the riders throughout all of the mountains of this tour. This isn't the battle, of course, for the golden jersey. This is the battle for the orange jersey. Let him enjoy his moment at 30 years of age. The Colombian Felix Rafael Cardenas gets what is for him his fifth win of the year. And a very, very upset Juan Miguel Mercado has to be content with second place. What's going to be important now, though, is the times on that clock because we've seen a great response behind Oscar Sevilla coming up to take third place just ahead of his teammate Valverde and just uh, getting onto the back there for fifth place, uh, Leonardo Pipoli. But what I want to see now is the position of Roberto Heras, and there he is. Uh, he's there with Michael Rasmussen, and it looks as if uh, one of the Osa brothers has come up there as well. But the time gaps are important between him and Isidro Nozel. The man who started the day in the yellow jersey. Delomo slipping through the line there. Osa coming up now, but Heras really needs to grab as many seconds as he can. You never know. They could be vital by the end of this tour. He would be preferred one or two minutes, I think, today, not just a few seconds. Uh, but we'll wait and see. The clock really does start when he hits the line as Aito Osa comes over the line and then follows the race for the time for the golden jersey. 101 approximately was the time gap as uh, Roberto Heras with the congratulations from Michael Rasmussen comes over the line. Now, we'll see how many seconds he's gained. One thing's for sure, there'll be no change in the leaderboard tonight, at least in the destiny of the Golden Jersey. Well, there should be the Golden Jersey group right now. Levi Leipheim was there, but I actually didn't see the Golden Jersey. He may well not even have stayed in this group, and uh, it could be that he has suffered some kind of a defeat on the slopes of this climb because he was a few moments ago with Levi Leipheimer. Leipheimer looking over his shoulders to see where is the golden jersey. Well, you know, Roberto Heras has got himself some serious time because it's already around about a 40-second advantage that he's pulled back. We're waiting. He's still there. Comes Manuel Beltran. He might have held on to his position here. As he now look over the tire table, still looking, there he is, tucked in on the back still of his teammate. He's going to concede on the line about 54 seconds, I would suspect, almost a minute. It may not be enough, but it certainly kept the door open. It certainly kept the door open. In uh, two days going up the mountains, Roberto Heras has pulled back almost two minutes of his deficit in the overall classification. Felix Cardenas winning over Mercado, by the way, Gonzalez de Galeano, he finished 23rd, just one place better than the team leader and the race leader, Isidro Nozal, 
all timed in at a minute 55. Roberto Heras crossed the line in eighth place, just over a minute behind, one minute 02 to be absolutely precise. And so he's made a gain of 53 seconds. But he needed a gain of 46 sec of, of, of uh, six seconds more than that to have moved himself up into second place. But of course, he's still got the mountain time trial to come and one more mountain stage, although it's not a mountain top finish. Yes, and with just five days left to go, and it's another beautiful day in Spain, they still haven't found how to dislodge Isidro Nozal from that golden jersey. He's hoping by the end of this day he'll have worn it for 14 consecutive days, and no one expected that. Another day of the tour in beautiful summer-like conditions. This is now stage 17, 188 kilometers. The riders going off the Sierra Nevada, down to the start in Granada, and on to Cordoba. We saw David Miller attack, he is still alone, but the other two have been joined now by Oscar Sevilla and Michael Rasmussen. Surely, Bob, that is going to cause a reaction. Rasmussen in seventh place on GC right now. Onse is going to really have to make a, bit, a concerted effort now. He's still a ways away GC-wise on time, but this is a very dangerous breakaway. And Onse is going to, they have all four men still in the front group on the front of the peloton right now, chasing so that Michael Rasmussen doesn't get any closer to the top position on GC. Here's David Miller right in the front of the bikers, and he is really flying up this road right now. So David Miller with a total of 22 wins in his career since he turned professional back in 1997. He's won the Mayo Jean in the Tour de France. Don't forget this year he lost it by 0 0.08 of a second, despite the fact he probably conceded 10 seconds with an unshipped chain. Uh, and he's not got over that very quickly, I can tell you, as he's now stretched it out to almost 40 seconds. Well, that was a technical problem on that occasion. Uh, they should certainly have had a front changer on that uh, front chain ring of his in the Tour de France, but that's not a problem this afternoon because he's got two chain rings on this bike and he's got a chain guide as well. He's coming up to the uh, Flamme Rouge right now, the international sign for every bike rider indicating that there's just 1,000 metres to go. And nobody's going to catch this man now. Well, he made his move probably 19 kilometers from the finish. At first, he was with uh, Mercado and Martinez, and he dropped them both. And now he's been alone ever since. A very, very good piece of descending. This is the icing on the cake for David Miller now, because it'll prove he has good legs, good form, as he looks forward to an attempt at winning his first ever world time trial title. Following in the wheel tracks of the other great British time trial is now retired Chris Boardman. So he'll enjoy this last few moments. He's no stranger, as I said earlier, to winning road stages as well as time trial stages in the previous welters. But you're only as good as your last win, Paul, and this is a special one for him. You're only as good as your last win. His last win was in Spain, but this is a lot better. And to win a road stage, in fact, it's won a road stage in the Vuelta before, I think, outspinting Santiago Portera. But this one, look at the joy there. He's enjoying this, sitting up with about 500 metres to go. He knows he's got it in the bag, and he's uh, saluting the crowd quite admirably. Well, he's no need to worry about time. He's lost far too much of that. He's thinking purely of the stage win. Good result for his team, Cofidis and a chance to enjoy the moment here as he comes in this time in the Vuelta last year I think he was already out of the race he'd slung his bike away but now a year makes a big difference as David Miller wins the stage look at that speed 47 and a half kilometers average speed for this stage of 188 kilometers here this afternoon now this is the next group coming in the group uh, of uh, four riders who were caught in no man's land and the main field is not too far behind well, Rasmussen looks as though he's going to give it a bit of a sprint here. He'll be challenged, I think, and it's Martinez is still there, but it's going to be a close-run thing. Rasmussen with the most to gain, but at the end of the day, the gains will not be really significant. As Martinez comes over, Oscar Sevilla, is he going to get second on the line? Close. It'll go to the photograph. But look at the sprint now. This is crucial because it looks like Zabel to me. It is Zabel on the line of Bataki nowhere. Now that is going to be probably the best gain of the day. Big gain for Eric Zabel there, just ahead of Freddy Rodriguez, who was in there in the lime green jersey for Vinny Calderola. So obviously his team did have confidence in him. He was in there with a chance of getting himself a high placing. But for Eric Zabel, that will extend his lead in the points competition. He needed to do that today over Alessandro Pataki because for the men who are exceptionally good on the flat stages they've not got too many left here this uh, in this uh, Vuelta a España they've got one more tomorrow and then they will have to do battle again on Sunday in Madrid but this man flew the coupe early on tw 20 kilometers to go 12 and a half miles 
and uh, I have to tell you what that was a very good performance but look at his face there you can actually see he really pushed himself over those last 15 kilometers and I'm not sure whether it's joy or relief which comes out onto his face well there's the result of the day Alberto Martinez who had every chance to go with David because he was alongside him at 20 kilometers to go he led in Oscar Sevilla, Unai Osa and Michael Rasmussen and then further down, Eric Zabel cleaned up from the bunch, and that might have won, in hindsight, Eric Zabel the points competition, but we won't know that for a few more days. Freddy Rodriguez continues to sprint well. What a shame in some ways there was a breakaway there because Freddy would have done probably a great sprint. There's the presentation. Now, Bob, as we watch the presentation of uh, Nozal, I did ask you, uh, what on earth is the mascot on the left? And you said? Uh, that is the Bay of Biscay Blue Crab. It's indigenous, endangered, and it's also one of the few migratory crustaceans and the mascot of the sponsor of the Golden Jersey. Really? Well, I'm going to ask Paul Schoen exactly what it really is in a moment, but that is a Zidro Nozal overall leader for 14 days now. No time difference to his teammate, nor to Roberto Heras, nor to Manuel Beltran or Valverde there at 5.20. Rasmussen will have gained just a few seconds on the sprint. He's still in seventh place. He's closing in ever so little on Francisco Mancebo. And the top ten not changing today. Felix Cardenas there at 9.28, completing the top ten. Two and a half thousand kilometers now completed, and for the last two weeks we've had the same overall leader, Zidra Nozal of Spain. He's looking today to defend that lead on the, a shorty stage of the race, just 144 kilometers. The ride is now settling down for four nights in the same hotel in Madrid and going out to the courses each day. We're at Las Rosas now, it's a circuit race. That's just over a mile to the finish for this man, and I don't think they can take it away from him now. He'd be unwise to start celebrating just yet, but he's only won a stage in the Ruta del Sol in 2001, and in his first year as a pro, he won a stage of the Tour of Argentina. Now he can add to that a stage in the Tour of Spain. Terrific result. The blue bridge there across the road indicating to him that there are two kilometres left to go to the finish. That uh, The pace that he's been doing right now will be around about 2 minutes and 20 seconds, and that's all his body has to suffer for right now to get himself to the finishing line but there's been a major acceleration in the main field in fact it's split the main field into two very distinct groups as we charge into town here right now and uh, once again this has not been an easy stage of the uh, Vuelta a España he's got 58 seconds so he stretched it out comfortably again over the chasers I think he doesn't have to worry too much about that because he could almost walk to the finish line now hopefully yeah but that, you know what a great demonstration it is from a rider you know you just keep on trying one day they do let you go and uh, today was a very hard race in that breakaway strong man got away the bunch weren't chasing the combination was right it was all working out perfectly and when he hit them he waited for them to make their attacks got them on the sprint at uh, Valdemarillo and then just went straight by and away well, right now he's just got to concentrate this is a tough road to be away on your own uh, there's the police indicating uh, get off the big highway right now and look for the road into town and you can see these guys have got no organization right now they're all trying to leap away one at a time and that is certainly not the best way to try and pull time back on the man in front and in the fact whole groups they come together the buyers up here now yeah, they were only they were only 10 or 15 seconds off a few moments ago, but I, I really wonder where Zabaya came from because he must have done a storming ride. He was originally in the break. He fell out of it. We never actually saw him for ages, and he's gone back up to it. But it doesn't matter now. It's all too late. He's another Mr. Persistent and consistent, Zabaya. But this rider now is going to enjoy his moment as he heads through the kilometre, and he knows now nobody's going to catch him, Bob. No, he's got a good shot here now. He just has to uh, get around the corners in good order. Peloton is chasing very hard. It wouldn't surprise me if they caught the group that's chasing him. They seem to go under the 4K to go banner mm. just a little bit behind the little breakaway, which would wipe out the Benesto two rider advantage. They were at three minutes taking over the team lead. Maybe that's why Onse did a very hard chase, split the Peloton. They won't uh, catch this man though. He's, uh, he's just uh, gonna be so pleased with this win. He put a lot into it. Couple of uh, dodgy corners here before the finish line, but then he'll see the line. 
and he'll know it's a great result for the team and a fantastic win for himself. He's never won a race this big, and uh, they'll be drinking the champagne at the Paternina table tonight. Checked over his shoulder, and it's a real big result for the Paternina team, this, and he deserves everything he gets out of this tour. He's won stages in the Ruta del Sol and the Tour of Argentina, but as every Spanish rider will tell you, to win a stage of the Tour of Spain, and he's going to milk this one and enjoy it all the way up to the line. Time is not important, but the victory is. And he has tried and tried and tried to do this over a number of days in breakaways and on his own and always lost his chance in the closing kilometres. But that's how you do it. You get in a break which is really under pressure. You wait until they've stopped attacking one another and you get away and you just do the ride. Clock starts now, but Pedro Diaz Labato is the stage winner of the 18th stage of the Tour of Spain. The peloton is here. Well, this, sorry, this is the, the merging of the two groups. There should be eight riders here. Now, can Savaya get himself a result here? It's been quite an escape for two Vinesto riders, though. Arieta Garcia da Costa are both in this escape. Horace is trying to, but there will be a slight gain in the team race, but only slight because the whole field is into that back straight now. They won't be quick enough to catch the leaders here as the riders spin for the line, but it looks to me as though it's Garcia who might take it out on the line. Oh, a nasty little clash of wheels there. As Schweder tries to get over the top of uh, Horac, who couldn't get away, so he finishes last. Last, Kel may get it, and the two Benesta boys come over. This might just be Lagunia as he crosses the line. As the spin now, Pataki on the right again. As they come up to the line, another... Will there be any points for Eric Zabel? Now, it may have been there was a crash there, but we'll see on the replay, but there was a... It was really a very strange antic from him as he came over the line. He thinks he's won the stage. I have a funny feeling the Kelme rider actually came up towards the end. He didn't realize that anybody was in front. Uh, yeah. We've seen this on a number of occasions in the past, and uh, I think he thought he was going for the win there, and that's going to be rather upsetting. We've seen Pedro Diaz win his first stage of the Tour of Spain, while poor old Constantino Sabaya, he thought he'd won his first stage. This is him coming up to the line. He caught the breakaway late on. He had no idea that one man had slipped away and he was getting ready to celebrate his first ever win on the stage of the Tour of Spain. You've got to feel sorry for him because he too, like Pedro Labato, Diaz Labato, is a real trier in this race, but it wasn't a B. He actually was second, 44 seconds behind Diaz and the rest of the break coming in same time. Arieta, Rafael Schweder of Germany and uh, Jose Garcia Acosta, they're completing the top five, as it were, in Arki Sassi. All these rides are in the breakaway virtually throughout the day today. Laguna and Carlos Garcia. Zabo, best of the rest in 10th, and a valuable few points there in the points competition. But not many gained, was it? Because Pataki was right on his back wheel, but interestingly, Zabo again beating him in the sprint to the line there with Fred Rodriguez in 12th place. Heras finishing at 36 same time as the golden jersey this is the scene on the finishing podium today pedro diaz his third win of his career and without doubt far and away his best win so in effect there's no change amongst the leaders might be tomorrow we're back in the mountains as uh, we look down there valverde still just a little bit behind beltran Mancebo and propping them all up is Felix Cardenas at 9.28. So no change at all in the top 10 as we head towards the last weekend. 15 days in the golden jersey now for Desidro Nozal. He's got an awful lot of these trophies, plaques and flowers, but I'm sure he's sharing them with a very, very good and efficient Onse team. Nineteen days, the mountains are back in the Vuelta Espana, just a weekend to come. The last real opportunity now for Roberto Heras to attack the race leader of 15 days. Zidro Nozal knows now he's going to have to resist, surely, a hard attack from this man who won the race in the year 2000. It's going to be a tough day. This is the situation. Nozal still on top of the leaderboard, still with 303 on his teammate Di Galdiano. 3.09 is the big time count though on Roberto Heras. Beltran is in fourth. Alejandro Valverde still with some fight there in fifth. Further down the list as his final weekend approaches, Mancebo stays in sixth while popping up the top ten. A stage winner on the Sierra Nevada 
Felix Cardenas at 9.28. Four Americans survived to the final weekend as well, and Levi Leipheimer is the best of them in 61st. Freddy Rodriguez, still promising us a stage win, perhaps on Sunday in Madrid, is lying there in 116th place. One man who is pretty safe in the King of the Mountains and today should confirm himself as the King of the Mountains is the Colombian rider Felix Cardenas, brought into this race to try and win this title for his small team and it looks as though after today he will have done it. Let's have a look at the situation in the King of the Mountains competition. He's got 194 points. Aito Oza back there on 112 and Horac Valverde Perez. Perez wants the leader of this competition very early on in the opening week. So that uh, competition should end today. Let's have a look where we're off to. It stays 19, remember. It's a road pretty familiar to the riders who took part in this event one year ago, from Alcobendas to Calada Villaba. And Pablo Lestras, by the way, was the winner on that occasion. He's in a leading group of riders at the moment, as they just come over the top of the first first category climb. The second first category climb, uh, the Navas Dorado, which takes us up to 1,880 meters, is still ahead. This is the main field, don't forget. There are still 11 riders ahead, but this now is the battle to try and unseat the golden jersey. Well, Levi Leipheimer really getting into form in the last week of the Vuelta a España here. I think he's going to be a very serious candidate when we go forward to the World Championships in Hamilton. Luis Perez also moving forward. This is now Cardenas, the leader of the King of the Mountains classification. The pressure is on. Everybody has thrown caution to the wind. This is the last big chance in the Vuelta a España to really blow the race apart and maybe finally decide all of the positions in the top ten. Roberto Harris in about seventh or eighth place. No, Tala just swung off there. Bobby, we've seen him do that before. He has given 100%, and now he has gone. There's still, he's still got teammates there. Rasmussen has come in nicely now, right in behind Luis Perez. The big men in the overall are starting to test the water. Roberto Herras going down the far side. He looked over his shoulder just to see what the face of Isidro Nozal was like. He knows he's got to do something very special here this afternoon. Third in the overall classification at the start of the day. 3.09 behind. And right now it's Perez taking up the pacemaking. But you know what? Isidro Nozal is still there for the moment. And they still have just over 2,000 feet to climb to the summit of this mountain. As we now see Herras really launching an early attack. He's got to go early, Bob. He's got to get minutes. He's not looking a second on this one. He looks fantastic right now. He's put in a big attack. Luis Perez, who's been riding so very strongly, starting to close the gap now with Michael Rasmussen. We haven't seen Igor Gonzalez de Galliano. I think he has detonated. One of the first riders to go was Mikel Pradera, but he'd been doing a lot of the tempo leading up to the bottom of the climb. But now Eras knows that no matter who comes with him, he has to make a huge effort, and he's hoping that that man just down the line in the golden jersey will crack, start to open up gaps. You can see him trying to fight for the wheel he's of really Chema Del Omo from the Minanitsa team. He's having a hard time doing that. I'm sure we'll see Oscar Sevilla come forward as a real strong ally for Roberto Heras, and they'll have a real attacking ride all the way to the top of this climb, and Nozal is in trouble right now. Well, Luis Perez pulled off as well. He couldn't stay on the wheel of Roberto Harris. He never quite closed down. There but this is. man, Gonzalez de Galdiano, is the one they wanted to get rid of. He's there with Tricky Beltran. Won't get any help at all from him. But uh, I think we'd seen that, hadn't we, Bob, on his face earlier on in the day. He really was not having a good day. Maybe the last weekend is going to be the last weekend too much for Igor Gonzalez de Galdiano. Just one climb too many for Igor Gonzalez de Galdiano. You can see what Nozal can do to limit. Now Cardenas has come forward. Roberto Eras is flying up this mountain. He's putting in a big challenge now. He knows that he'll know now that de Galdiano is gone. He's done some serious damage already in the first couple of kilometers of this climb. He looks so composed. He's into a very good rhythm there. Cardenas struggling just to stay on his wheel, so you know he's making big progress. He needs for Nozal to crack, and Nozal needs right now to start resisting, going at his own tempo, not try to panic and try to go up the hill as fast as he can and see who has less. It looks like Pietoli from the Vanessa team has come flying across the gap. That's a very strong trio of climbers right there, putting in some big damage to Isidro Nozal. Well, I think Galdiano uh, knows how bad he's going at the moment. He will ride sensibly here and hope to close down a little bit of time on the descent. He will probably now concede second. He's got to watch out, though. He doesn't concede third uh, to Alejandro Valverde because if he finishes 217 behind Valverde, he will lose that third place, and Valverde will get his wish, and that's to be on the podium in Madrid. Now we're looking down on the peloton here, which is splitting up. Harass is really giving this 
at just about everything he possesses, everything that's left in the stockpile now, and he's been joined by two good climbers. This is the leader here who's not panicking, he's got time in hand, and he knows this mountain isn't going to go on too long. So he will stay very sensible. There's Valverde in the blue jersey, Rasmussen is setting the pace. And I think, you know, he's just going to... He, it's very, very important at this moment in time he doesn't go into the red zone by doing silly things. Well, he doesn't want to respond to the attacks of the climbers. This man is uh, a little bit like a diesel engine. We've seen him ride superbly in the individual time trials, which indicates he can get up to speed and then ride at his own very good tempo, but he's not able to respond to the accelerations of men like Cardenas and Roberto Heras. They actually haven't opened up that much no, of an haven't. advantage right That's now, and they really need to start working together when they get to the steeper part of the climb. And look at that. There's a lot of work being done on the front. To, looks like, in fact, it's Valverde in person who's uh, stirring up the pacemaking. Well, you we have to remember that this climb actually kicks rather nastily in the last 500 meters to the summit, and you can make good progress there as we continue to twist our way up the mountain. The last big first category climb of this year's of Vuelta Espana, the last chance for Heras to get time over the golden jersey. Enough time to maybe finish him off tomorrow in the mountain time trial. Zidu Nozal is in terrible difficulty. Look at this. He has slipped to the tail of the group now and is looking extremely vulnerable because at the front of the group, it is Roberto Heras who is turning the screw. We have had shots too of the team car of Onse rushing all around the place. I think shouting at the TV cameraman for getting too close to the race at the front. And there is the Onse car now. And I think that this is a situation where, again, he's come up on the TV camera to complain about the proximity of the motorbike. But the one thing is short, Nozal is being isolated in the bottom left of our picture. And I can't understand why the man at the front there, top left-hand corner, Vicioso, has not been called back. It could be, Bob, but let's not forget these little race radios that everybody has. They only have a range of about two kilometers, and that's, that's a in a straight line. Well. And in a mountain like this, he might not be able to talk to his man. He's trying to get past, but look at the race referee. The race referee is not very happy at all with Manolo Sainz. He actually, on one occasion, I, went, I think, blocked the TV motorbike to one side of the road to stop him trying to get camera shots from the front of this group but this man right now is going through all kinds of hell just trying to stay in the bike race marco serrano there now the so most solid of all the team once riders is trying to pace him back that's another group of riders just in front of them who have been dropped by the eras led attack on these slopes with sevilla michael rasmussen is in there eras now has a lot of allies in the attack on this golden jersey nozal is losing all kinds of trouble and i think that manolo science is losing his mind right now <laughs> he's trying to block the tv camera made him come to a dead stop on the side of the road thinking that he was perhaps helping the breakaway riders a little bit too much but it's 11k kilometer climb up to 6,000 feet you have to be a little bit calm when you're the team manager they've been doing so much work this is the last moment for anybody to unseat nozal and they're taking full advantage of it at this point well, I think Nozal, hopefully, he's learned something over three weeks, and that's not to panic totally yet. He's got Serrano with him. Serrano is a wonderful teammate. Here he is talking to him, keeping going, probably saying, just follow my wheel, sit there and wait. He's got uh, David Achebaria has come up with him as well, and that's Santos Gonzalez in the striped suit, who also has a high position and doesn't want to lose it. So they're all gathering around Nozal now. And this guy also, don't forget, has made a lot of friends on this race because he's resisted all the attacks thrown at him. He never came in anybody's books as a winner of this tour. And I think a lot of people want to help him now.
but in fairness, Roy Nickman is known by them. He's young and has potential, and today is playing point man in the 7-Eleven strategy. Roy's in a break, right? Yeah. Yeah, they got like two or three minutes. Yeah. I'm going to probably pass and go up there. If you're in the back before the cobbles, will you call me up so I can move up? Just like, uh, fake it? Okay. Team manager Mike Neal, an ex-rider himself, has Nickman in the lead group. And with over 100 miles to go, an early understanding of the race pattern is necessary. And no better rider to advise than Andy Hampston, who's riding in the main pack in his new role as chief scout. Neal needs to evaluate the attack and the likely reaction here. Hey, dude. So Roy's five minutes up. Five already, huh? <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I'm gonna go up there and talk to him, and I'll be back. Okay, cause I, I'm not sure who's in there, but I didn't see anyone big, but... No. Kelly and Vanderarden are just hanging out. No, I just want to talk to him and make sure he's just sitting on yeah. and, you know, tell him to hang in there. Maybe yeah, he can do a good, good. job. I think it's kind of like, you know, we are talking about, he'll make it. No, oh, that's great. Yeah, it'll be perfect. It's amazing how much time they have already. He'll be way past the first speed before they get yeah. No, he'll be fine. Two miles ahead of the pack, but victory cannot be assured in this Queen of the Classics. Troisville is the gateway to the hell of the north. The worst roads in France. The 62 miles that have passed have nothing on the 104 that are to come. Of all the about the conditions of this course on a dry day. The advanced vehicles rolling over the first cobbles have already found out. With the cyclists close behind, Mike Neal has caught up with his rider, Roy Nickman, who is still in the breakaway. All right. Good job. Listen, just work a little bit. I don't think any hard pulls. Right. Come through normal. Save it. You're one of the best guys in this break. I'm doing what I can to sort of bolt get my way. Yeah. Pissing and eating at the back. Yeah. Just flow through when you have to, but you're one of the best guys in the break here. You're going to be great on the cobbles now. The breakaway has entered the first cobbles. After some three hours and nearly 60 miles of civilized surfaces, the course now disintegrates into a path more suited for livestock. Alan Piper is the first casualty. The pace setter is paralyzed roadside with a flat. The loss of time is magnified by the amount of energy spent trying to regather any speed on the rough road. While American Roy Nickman rolls on, sustaining the bone-jarring punishment near the lead. As the pack arrives at the cobbles, the 107 remaining cyclists now must jockey for position. The roads become impossibly narrow, requiring the racers to ride in almost single file. Normally these roads are made slick by spring rains and thick mud. However, the dryness has caused new concerns. Once a rider comes to the rough stones, dust flies. Visibility disintegrates and the urge to pull back becomes a very real nemesis. Especially since the breakaway speeds on. As dust settles, you begin to see the casualties strewn along the roadside. American Doug Shapiro illustrates the sacrificing role of the domestique by giving his wheel to a teammate who is designated to go on with the chase group. He's not the only one stuck without a wheel. This is a thankless job, to wait for help long after the race has passed you by. When the team car finally arrives and gives Shapiro a new wheel, his reward? To continue until he's needed again, when the next teammate breaks down. 
By the time the riders have reached the town of Salem, 22 athletes have called it quits. More are about to do so. The feed station is the traditional spot for riders to abandon. Most never intended to go past this point. Among them, Andy Hampson, who said prior to the start that Salem would be his final destination. He'll be joined by other 7-Eleven teammates, including Doug Shapiro. Uh, I just helped Doug in the beginning. And then uh, somebody got a flat, gave my wheel, got dusty. It got really dusty. Uh, I, I couldn't, it was so dusty, you couldn't even see where you're going at all. So much fun. Uh, my lungs sound so good too, eh? Before it started. Here you want you come to this part here. Your bag's right here. <laughs> For these riders, two sections of the cobbles were more than enough. In quarter the day behind, Roy Nickman leads the great escape. Perhaps the greatest seen in this race for over two decades. Behind the pack, searching for a leader, Meander lost through the villages of France. Thomas Megmuller came here to help pave the way for teammate Sean Kelly, but is now blazing his own trail. This group of opportunists are still building their lead at a time when the pack should be reeling them in. Without a leader either, the front group are surviving better than could ever have been imagined. Pignon is perplexed. All the men he fears are here, but with every turn of the pedals, others are gaining ground. Sean Kelly searches for help, hoping for the first sign of a reaction. Can, for example, a rider like Dirk de Mol, a Belgian who's never won a major race in his life, influence the outcome? With him, there are 12 like-minded men. This breakaway, started by riders the French call domestiques, men who help others to win, has developed into a serious attack that could never have been foreseen by the favourites. Now, the biggest obstacles for these men are not the riding legends behind, but the cobbled legend ahead. The forest of Arlenberg awaits. After leading the Paris-Roubaix race for over three and a half hours, the 13 surprise leaders approach the main test, a forested corridor of misery that welcomes wheeled traffic only once a year. To lead over these terrible roads is an advantage. And Roy Nickman, young in years and mature in mind, leads the high-speed charge to the forest of Arlenberg with 100 miles completed. The speed has been constantly high, and with the cobbles making steering difficult, the dangers are all too obvious. Less than a mile into the forest of pain, Nickman becomes a casualty. The banging and bouncing have caused him to blow out, and a cruel piece of luck, so typical of this race, is again shaping the outcome. Nickman is left on the roadside, waiting for a tyre, while the brake speeds away. Dancing to a tune that few in this group have ever heard before, Alan Piper continues to pull the leaders along. The Arlenberg Trench has again begun to play its part in the race to Roubaix. Finally, Nickman gets a wheel, but he's already lost a minute, and with it, possibly his dreams of winning the race. Up front, the end of the two-mile...